Intermission. Intermission. Dryson is talking to someone outside. And I can hear him coming back now. Okay, maybe he wasn't so. Okay. The intermission is over. Good. Did you get a word of what I was just saying there? No, I was too busy singing an intermission song. Okay, well, I have pressed the recording button again, so whenever you want to continue. I have completely forgotten what you were just saying to me. Um, about the Dark Brotherhood and how when you finish it, it's just like, okay, the rest of the quest are exactly the same. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I oh. forgot about that. They do this thing in Skyrim where they kind of have just random, meaningless little quests you can do, just in case you don't already have enough money flowing over all over you. So, um, I don't know. It felt like they put those in rather than actual have a, lo a lengthy, interesting story to the guilds, yeah. like they kind of did in Oblivion most of the time. Like, I, I actually really, for some reason, remember the Fighters Guild in Oblivion fondly. I don't know why. Mm. I don't know why. I felt it, it seemed like a much more logical... I know what it was, possibly. You're not trying to, like, save the world or something in the Fighters Guild quest. It's just, there's some nonsense going on with this other people. We need to figure out that and take care of it. That's the best description I can give without spoilers. Yes. Uh, um... So you, you see that Skyrim tried to do something similar with, um, was it the Brotherhood they were called? In, uh, Companions. Companions, that's the one. They tried to do something similar with the Companions, but uh, I, I'll do a non-spoiler section and then we can probably talk about that a bit more afterwards because that's interesting. Some people so, are going to have to skip so much of this video. So, so, so non-spoilers... Non spoilers. The companions are um, a a group similar to the Fighters Guild in Oblivion, where you're kind of doing kind of everyday things and a community project, for example. But then yeah. then it just ruins it by being like, okay, there's actually something else going on here, and you don't get to continue, in my opinion. So now spoilers, spoilers, and so on. Um, why, why, why would they then be like, okay, now that we're werewolves, <laughs> and you have to choose, or you can't carry on? Being I have to say, on the one hand, the fact that they brought werewolves back, and I say they brought them back because I'm pretty sure they were in Daggerfall, and I know they were in Blood Moon. Mm. So they brought werewolves back. I was sitting there thinking, I wonder when the werewolves are going to appear. <laughs> but I didn't think it would be the companions. I will give them that credit. It did, like, oh, you're werewolves. That mm. was a pretty good the hell is going on moment for me, honestly. No, I, I agree that it was pulled off well. But I just think that after that, there are no real guilds that are like what you mentioned with the Fighters Guild, where you're not being some, like, either dark cult leader ruling the underground like the thieves guild or dark brotherhood or um like just helping out people for money like a plumber yeah um i don't want to say ex i don't think it's worth doing another by the way should we de-spoiler we may have forgotten de-spoiler de-spoiler de 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 i don't want to do i don't want to go into another spoiler zone so i'll keep it vague but mm. there is also a bit in fighters in the Fighters Guild quest line which gets weirdly dark and kind of badass, I seem to recall. It was a long time ago now. But I remember doing that and going, wow, okay, that's just thrown some moral ambiguity into the mix. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. But um, so go and enjoy that if you don't know what I'm talking about. Probably kind of already spoiled it by saying there's a twist of some sort, but eh, it's good. There's oh, there's this advert going around for a book, and it's and the 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 pull quote that they've taken from the review is I did not see the ending coming. Oh. So it's like now you're expecting a twist. If you're gonna buy this book, you're gonna be reading it like where's the twist? This is uh, this is this is definitely tangent now. But you know what I hate. <laughs> When I'll be, I'm one of those people who still gets physical magazines because I'm hardcore. Yeah, same. You know? But uh, I'll be, there'll be an advert in the magazine for a game, and the quote will be something like, "Look set to revolutionize something or other," and all the quotes seem to be in, like future tense. Yes. And that immediately <laughs> says to me, this probably wasn't actually from a review, this quote. This is from some meaningless E3 video or something. Yeah. Where everything is temporary, beta is beta. You cannot be sure the actual final product will be worth having. And I, I'm always suspicious. If you're a reviewer and you want to get quoted, do not write in future tense. Okay. No, always write in future tense. If you're a reviewer, and I want will to get always quoted, be writing in future tense. <laughs> if you're a reviewer and want to get quoted, never say bad things. Ah. Uh-huh. Just be like, this game is amazing. It blew my mind. And then Call of Duty comes any- out. This game is amazing. It blew my mind. Has anyone noticed I seem to be doing thumbs up a lot? I don't know what that is. I don't know. That's how hip I am. Hip. Down with it, fam. Yeah, down with the man. Holy crap, what were we talking about before that tangent happened? <laughs> you, you, We were talking about... This is can I? This is like a big thing I want to talk about. Yes, we, I said that I liked the Fighters Guild partly because the quest wasn't trying to save the world and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I honestly think this might be one of the like biggest... It, you know, there are mechanical problems to these games, and then there are just kind of thematic issues. Yes. Like, less quantifiable and subjective stuff. And I think one of the biggest problems these games constantly have is that they feel... They're trying to set you up as some sort of world-changing hero in, a, in not only the main quest, but a lot of the side things as well. Yeah. And yet the game is not in any way able to communicate that you've changed the world because of how it's designed. You yeah. know, yeah. we said already in Oblivion, you would literally save the world from who knows what, and you get some shiny, crappy armor for your trouble, but then <laughs> everyone still treats you like crap. And it's even worse in Skyrim because you literally are the chosen one, like you were in Morrowind. Mm. And, oh. Uh, See, what, what. Uh, I keep drawing back to Deus Ex. Um, but obviously it's not as open end as these games but what, could it just be because Deus Ex may have the best endings to a game ever yes and so, yeah. and story possibly oh yeah just yeah but continue anyway um it's it's probably because it's not as open ended as Skyrim and Oblivion and the the series but when you did something it directly affected the story. I mean, it still had a set path, like, like yeah. you still had to. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. There's, there should be a rule on this. Like, if it's been out for ten years, it's so it doesn't matter. We're going to assume you've played this stuff, but yes. just because we're nice, we're putting a big spoiler. What is this for day sex, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so spoilers. So spoilers. you still have to go with the NSF, right? But yeah. you, but it gives you the illusion. Of choice, yeah. Like even if you choose to ignore them the first time, like when you're in the plane, you still end up having to go with them. And Definitely. then, but then, and then by the time you think, oh, I have to go with them, you're actually like, yeah, I want to join the NSF. That's probably my single. I want to try and wrap this up quickly because I don't want to be in spoiler mode too long. But oh, yeah. that probably is my single biggest plot issue with Deus Ex is just that they seem to kind of run out of game at some point <laughs> halfway through for the NSF. You know, bit if you if you don't actually sympathise with them, you have no option. Yeah, you know, you're kind of thrust into it. And I always thought they could have found some kind of excuse for you to be. Maybe Unaco just turned on you anyway, or something, and you were kind of a reluctant hero. Yeah. that could have been so easy to implement, I think. But yeah, shall we despoiler? Yes. Shall we despoiler? I love how we've created this system <laughs> where we just we bring the Republic Commando laser beams down. <laughs> And wash away the spoilers. 
you and your face palm. <laughs> but I really want to go on about this thing. We keep getting sidetracked, but this is really my my. I call it the like chosen one syndrome, which <laughs> Elder Scrolls seems obsessed with. And you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's in. You know, they have these huge, wide open world, and they're really trying to sell to you the idea that this world could just be existing without you. You are, but the so many of the quests are trying to convince you, paradoxically, that you are special and chosen, and what lovely and will change the world. And the game just cannot cope with that pressure. It is not set up to adequately give you consequences for that. Okay. Mm. So them trying to go for this over and over again is just getting kind of baffling. And in particular, in Oblivion, you were kind of the hero, but you were almost like the side hero. You were kind of helping the main dude. And you weren't really the chosen one so much as just the guy who happened to be in the jail when Picard came walking through, mm. you know? I kind of like that approach to it better, even if I generally like Skyrim's story a tad better. Ooh, yeah, possibly. Interesting. Uh, but mm, it's, yeah. in, it's interesting that you say that because uh, it it would be literally I feel that because you are Doverkeen, you are the chosen one, you are the second coming of Jesus with a helmet oh, and a battle axe. Oh, oh. Um, like you would in real life, realistically, you would just have horrendous amounts of adoring fans. Oh no! <laughs> following you, we've had enough of those. <laughs> exactly. Like, re- realistically, the stuff that they could do to make it be like, yeah, you, you look, you, you are the Messiah. Here you go. Here's, here's everything that a Messiah has to deal with on a daily basis. It would make the game like a chore. Because, okay, so go, go save some children, visit the hospice, um, write a greeting card to someone's gran, <laughs> sign some boobs... I'm pretty sure Jesus signed some boobs in his time. I'm going to hell, aren't I? Probably. <laughs> so, oh, but um, just continuing on this whole thing, with Skyrim in particular, the very gameplay is kind of built into this idea that you're special because you're Dovahkiin. You can shout. Hardly anyone else can shout. So, And this has had an even more detrimental effect than usual because... I really think it kind of cheapens being a mage because you have this shouting power. You just do a couple of main quests mm. and you get the amazingly special rare shouting ability yeah. that no one else has practically. And until now, the main benefit of being a mage was having all these fun things to play with that no one else got. And so, but now, pretty any I played Skyrim as just a guy who hit dudes with a hammer. And yet I was still able to cast lightning and all this stuff just because yeah. I did the main quest a little bit. And I really didn't like that. That just felt like such a betrayal of kind of the entire point of an RPG, which is to pick your approach to things and, you know, that kind of business. See, I, I handicapped myself somewhat by ah. not... Well, I, at first I didn't do the main quest for as long as I could until it got boring. And then I was like, okay, so there's no dragons, so what's the point, like? Like, I'm not encountering random dragons in my environment. I've done loads of the side quests, so stepped it up. Got the dragons, got the shouts. But then even when I got them, I tended not to use them. I think the only one that I used was um, the typical Fuss Rodar for simple entertainment purposes. Because throwing yeah. people off buildings is hilarious and always that, will that, be. That always is. That's very, <laughs> very, very extremely factually true. But, you know... Just from a... I say you know too much. Have you ever noticed that? No. You know, I say you know too much. <laughs> but this whole business... I feel like my brain is trying to reboot at the moment. You might have to save this this conversation quickly. So, uh, the shouts, um, Skyrim, things, <laughs> weapons... <laughs> yes, Skyrim and such. One thing, actually, um, you mentioned being a mage earlier... But um, I didn't really expand on it. But now you've mentioned shouts and how do it it goes on like that. Make it so. A lot of people think that mages are overpowered in Skyrim. I haven't played a mage long enough to have any I, idea. I, so. I, I yeah, exactly. I've played a mage maybe for a couple hours, and I 
I do agree. Once you get the um, ice spike spell, you can pretty much go around just putting, pinning people to walls left, right, and center, and then shouting at them <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. I would, if you didn't know what we were talking about, you pin them to walls and then shout at them until they die. <laughs> See, the thing is, when you run out of mana, it regenerates, obviously. And then you, even if you're out of mana, there's more than likely a shout that can get you out of a sticky combat situation anyway. Uh... So, as a mage, I think that... They, in fact, they might have fixed it, because if I remember, I remember reading somewhere that they patched some of the spells to be less powerful. Uh, but um, I'm not entirely sure, because how the leveling system works in Skyrim is really similar to the rest of them, so things level with you. Except there for is bandits. a grand tradition in Bethesda games of patching shit later on, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then they give you such lights as horse armor. <laughs> but um, that's funny you mentioned the leveling system because I, I I feel the need to specify when I say leveling system, I can be meaning one of two things because yes. you've got the leveling system for your character, which is where you you get your skills and crap up. I say skills and crap, but there aren't attributes anymore in Skyrim, are there? No, just skills. Well, I think they call them attributes, but it's just like health, stamina, and mana now. Is That's your attributes. Yeah. Not sure I like that, honestly. It seems very... I hate to use the phrase dumbing down, but that's just... You know, um, but then... Oh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, but then I've got... <laughs> but then you've got what... I think Oblivion did it much more noticeably... Because you have bandits running around in demonic armor after level twenty, yeah, which that's... made it incredibly easy to get really rich as well. Yeah, that's but, true. But that's the other leveling system that I might be talking about, which is kind of the world leveling with you. That's what Oscuro fixes. That's the main thing that Oscuro changes. Mm. You know, that doesn't happen nearly as noticeably. What was What was interesting with Skyrim is that you could. <sighs> You could say that you wanted to take on a bandit base, like a fortress. You would be like, okay, I'm level three. I'm going to try and take this place. You'd go in, you'd be like, ah, and then immediately be killed by everyone. And then you'd be like, okay, I'm going to mark that on my map and I will have my revenge in, <laughs> in five levels time. But you'll go back in five levels time, take out everyone outside and you'll be like, yes. And then as soon as you walk in, you'll get killed by a chieftain. Like yeah. immediately. he will just be like, nope. Mace to the head. I I did actually like that a bit that uh, there was more of a noticeable kind of end of dungeon bad guy thing going on in Skyrim. Whereas sometimes in Oblivion it was just kind of you kill one last grunt and that's apparently the end of the dungeon. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree with you on that. The only um, exception was that some of the Oblivion end of dungeon things were, oh god. Giant mud crab, anyone? It, exactly, especially with Obscuro. You could go oh, through the scary. you could go through the easiest dungeon, and then suddenly it's like, well, here's a guy that just looks normal, and in real life you could probably talk to, but no, he's just gonna maul you anyway. If only this was Dungeons like and Dragons, eh? You could roll like charisma or some crap and talk to him. You could roll sprint and run away. <laughs> you could roll cowardice and wet yourself. Yeah. Uh. I've, I'm fascinated how little we've actually mentioned Morrowind during this entire thing that's supposedly about Bethesda games, but um, because okay, I think Morrowind may be one of the worst examples I've ever seen of a game that was so important and you know revolutionary for the time in a lot of ways, and yet has aged horribly, horribly. Mm. Morrowind yeah. has aged. I, I, Deus Ex has aged badly in some some senses, but Morrowind, <laughs> my god. You're playing Morrowind. Morrowind uh, is almost hard to look at. Like, Deus Ex is at least acceptable. It's, like, got that. It looks older than it is. I mean, it, it didn't look great yeah. when it came out. But Morrowind is like, oh, okay, so everything is mudflats now. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, you mentioned that we haven't really spoken about it. I haven't really played it much, to be honest. I played uh, a couple hours and then spent the rest of my time no clipping around the environment, um, exploring. And one thing that I definitely did like about Morrowind was that a lot of the terrain and places that you actually visit in the game are a lot more out there. 
Like, there's a lot more kind of crazy shit going on, I find. Oh, yeah, definitely. Even though it all looks the same. I, I get your point. Yeah, everywhere does look yeah. brown. People can play in games today are brown. Morrowind is brown the game. You know how Human Revolution, everything's orange. Well, in Morrowind, everything's brown. Mm. And it's a kind of... It, it's it's an art style, technically. <laughs> it's minimal. <laughs> but yeah, it's minimalist and brave and out there. And Postmodern. Brown. <laughs> Lots of brown. So I just... Oh... Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know Morrowind, what a big thing to talk about Morrowind is. A lot of people, when Oblivion came out, said that it was dumbed down from Morrowind because they got rid of levitation, they got rid of throwing weapons, they got rid of spears, all this crap. And I was sitting there thinking, it's not as if those were actually... I mean, levitation, I get why people would miss levitation. That was kind of... But on the other hand, can you imagine trying to design a level where at any moment the player could just go, nope, and essentially engage <laughs> a non-cheating no-clip mode. Yeah. And you had to be a mage of, of some variety in order to use it reliably. Because if you tried to cast it normally, you, we all know how Morrowind weapons and casting work. It's like, fail, fail, win, then die. It just, yeah. Then it lasts two seconds when you finally get it working. But, um, but then you've got, you know, Morrowind's combat... What are the bloody differences between the weapons and Morrowind? I have yet to figure it out. They have different numbers on them, but they all work the same. Mm, uh, mm, uh, uh, you know. Uh, as long as you can uh, hit someone enough times, they will go down. And I mean, like, that was the one of the things that I really enjoyed about Skyrim over Oblivion and Morrowind. If you had, like, a ridiculously overpowered battle axe... You could just press it and go bang and you would like take someone's head off in one hit. And you actually <laughs> felt like you had a bit of weight behind your swing. Was was a Skyrim you were talking about? Yes. Yes. Oblivion was a bit like whew, <laughs> extremely slow sword swing. And then what, what always gets me about uh Oblivion and stuff is you know, the the swords, they basically the only difference is it just takes longer to kill someone and it feels less satisfying, doesn't it? Because you're just going, especially with the daggers. You're like, eh, 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 eh. But of course, because of the totally backwards way the leveling works, it's actually more effective to use a dagger to level up because you get the same like point increase on your skill, but you yeah. can do it faster. So it doesn't matter that you're doing less damage. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Just one of the various ways in which Oblivion's leveling system annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> And you have to sleep. I'm, mm, I'm not sure what I feel about that. It, uh, people complain they have to go to sleep, and it just was such a non-issue it's a non-issue, for me. Non-issue because there's beds it's, everywhere. Yeah, it was just like a minor inconvenience sometimes. And you know, I hate to play the role-playing card, <laughs> but it kind of was. It was like you know, ah, I have learned a great deal from my journey. Now to go rest and think about it. And then you wake up and you're better at punching people. It <laughs> makes more sense like Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness. So it's improvement. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, so, what's up, what else is on the list? Let's, let's see. Um, Talking of Tomb Raider. Oh. Have you ever played a female character in Oblivion, Skyrim, or Morrowind? And if so, did you notice the handicaps? I there is when you say handicaps, they have like different attributes. They don't do they? have different attributes, yes. And they're kind of like amazingly sexist, like women are cleverer but less <laughs> punchy. Precisely, yeah. You know, I'd be kind of be surprised if they didn't take that out of Skyrim because it was just kind of. Uh... I think that they did, as it happens, but I I know that um, I don't think it was in Fallout, either. But then in Fallout, you had that skill what was it you could get you could get lady where killer. you do more damage to the opposite gender you so. can get lady killer or um black widow i think the other one is yeah and you do like 50 percent more damage against male characters it's not 50 percent. that'd be <laughs> game breaking <but laughs> it's like five percent probably but then then that's always the thing like if you're if you play a female character there are more male enemies 
Really? Well, realistically, in the story, there are more male characters than female That's characters. That's actually extremely true, isn't so, it? So, huh. technically, if you get play a female and get the Lady Killer, no, Black Widow perk, you can do a lot more damage than if you was a male playing Lady Killer. That never even occurred to me. Excellent point. <laughs> Not sure what the message of that Balance. point is, but... Balance is the message. There you go, balance and shit. Um, whereas in Dark Souls, <laughs> where the customization is completely pointless because you'll just have a helmet on the entire game anyway, <laughs> you know, that there's no difference between the genders. It's purely cosmetic. And they both look kind of lumpy anyway, so it's not really like you're going to get any titillation from that. Um, what? Oh, you said something. What did you just say a minute ago? Um, oh, God. I don't I, know. I, Something I, about handicaps and attributes and females. You said something and I went, ah, I know, I can talk about this. And now it's gone. Gone forever. Lost to the realms of time. Like tears in the rain. I think it was, have you Have you ever played a female character? Oh, I can't remember what I was... Oh, this is... Oh, it's like on the tip of my brain. I'm like, here's an excellent point you could talk about. Sex nope. mods. No. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, I I could talk about Morrowind some more. Go on. What I do like about Morrowind is it's less handholdy. You don't have a big arrow pointing over there, so it's like you should go take this direction, go along this road, turn left. It actually, it feels like you're going on an adventure and taking directions. But mm. I have two issues with it. One. They can get the directions wrong because of bugs. That's fun. And second, the map is amazingly primitive looking and unhelpful. It's like you need to have this really far zoomed out view or this zoomed in really close view. Did you ever play Spider-Man 2? This is a <laughs> comparison. Segway. Spider-Man 2, the PS2 version, or Spider-Man 2, yeah, Enter yeah. Electro. I played the Spider-Man 2, 2 the movie one. Oh, yeah. uh, you are running out of disk space on Data D. Oh, hmm. Um. Um. <laughs> uh, let me just go have a look at that while I panic. Uh, when it says you are running out... Oh, yeah. Um. I think that's a pretty drastic... Um. This has been a ramble about <laughs> Bethesda and crap. If we don't get back to you, that's because I ran out of hard drive space. Wow, I really didn't expect that. This has been fun. Cultured soda, Dean. I'm just panicking here. And uh, I, 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 yeah, this has been Trizen. Um, we have been talking for like two hours, though. So I like how we said this is, and then we got our names backwards. <laughs> But yes, thank you, Dean. I think we made something resembling points, but I very badly need to stop recording right now. It's probably for the best. It's probably for the best. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. And Farewell. thank you for your patronage.